Open the floodgates of heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Let it rain. Hallelujah. Woo. I just want to say, open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. I wish I had some help today. Open the floodgates of heaven. to feed us some meat tonight. You know, last Sunday we worshiped, we shouted, we danced, we praised, but tonight God wants us to sober up a little and look into his word. And uh, we're going to do that here shortly. And uh, But we want to pray tonight. Let's pray that this broadcast going all over the world 
And uh, let's pray that somebody will be healed. I read a story about one of the apostles. Uh, and they said tradition had it that uh, one of the apostles, I believe it was Andrew, that uh, they was on a ship going somewhere and run into a storm. And they was, um, they was, uh, the ship tore up and they was cast upon the shore. And 30 sailors on board that ship drowned and Andrew prayed for them. And all 30, God brought all 30 of them back to life. Amen. Folks, we're missing something. We're missing something today. Amen. In this last day, God said he'd pour out of his spirit on all men. Hallelujah. Thank God. He said his sons and daughters would prophesy. Thank God. Hallelujah. Said his old men would dream dreams and the young men would see visions. And, and we're missing out on something. How many of you don't want to miss out on this tonight? Thank God. Let's worship one more time while they get us a song for tonight. that are not aware of it yet. Some preachers that are not aware of it. But this is not a popular way. Uh, this is not real popular. And if you want to be popular, uh, I suggest you get in something else because you're not going to be popular. But you know, I was thinking this afternoon, I don't want to be popular. I noticed on Facebook there's a former preacher. He used to be a crackerjack preacher. And uh, his sons in a big rock band, national known rock band, long hair. And he's a lot of times gets up there praising them. 
And uh, but I noticed when he puts a little column in there, it says 350 people like this, or 400 like this, and uh, you you can be popular if you want to. But I told the Lord this afternoon, I don't want to be popular. I want to be used of God. Hallelujah. I just want to be used of God in this last day. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to preach to you a few minutes, God willing, on the subject. The signs of the times. But God laid this on my heart, this scripture today. I, I didn't really have it, but I, I wanted to share this with you. And it may be a little lengthy, my reading, so you may go ahead and be seated. I appreciate you honor the Word of God. Turn with me to 1 Kings the 22nd chapter Amen In the previous chapter Ahab who was married to Jezebel the most wicked woman that ever lived I suppose and uh, and he ranked right up there and uh and God was about to destroy him, to kill him. And he humbled himself before God. And God said, see how he humbles himself. And uh, he said, because he humbleth himself before me, I'm not going to bring this evil in his day, but in his son's day. And... Uh, so turn with me to the 22nd chapter of 1 Kings. And Ahab sent for Jehoshaphat to help him in a war that he was fixing to fight. And uh, so Jehoshaphat told him, said, uh, my horses, my men, my weapons, they're just as yours. And uh, I'll join you in this. But he said, before we go to battle, you know, if, if everybody would learn when they get up in the morning, before they go to battle, you know, you may not go against swords and spears, but you, if you get up in the morning, you're going to battle before the day is over. You're going to battle for victory. You're going to battle to keep the truth in your heart. You're going to battle. Thank God for your children and, and your loved ones. Amen. And we need to prepare for battle. And so Jehoshaphat said, before we go to fight against these people, uh, let's inquire of the Lord. And uh, Ahab, as wicked as he had, as he was, he had his own prophets. And you know, it's amazing today how many prophets that Satan has out there deceiving the people. And the Bible said in the last day that if it were possible, everybody say if it were possible, that he would deceive the very elect. Woo, hallelujah. And then he said, if those days hadn't been shortened, that no flesh would be saved. But again, for the elect's sake. Oh, hallelujah to God. If you've been baptized in the name of Jesus uh, and repented of your sins uh, and filled with the Holy Ghost uh, with the evidence of speaking in tongues uh, and walking with God, I'm going to tell you something. You are part of the elect lady. Woo! Let's glorify him this morning.
did I think about 400 prophets up there and and uh, all with one accord all you have to do is turn your radio on and, and, and hear it's just a repetition you know same old thing the same old thing go out here and do anything you want to live like the devil and as long as you shake the preacher's hand and you get saved somewhere in the world amen and uh, these false prophets they began to prophesy and they said oh go up go up hallelujah oh amen can you hear it today can you hear the sound of the false prophets in the world amen but oh let me tell you something when you get a hold of truth it's going to have a ring to it that nothing else in this world has got so they said go up God's going to go to the battle Woo, hallelujah uh, I love to hear good gospel singing and once in a while I, I get a DVD of the Gaithers and, and oh they got some pretty voices on there but Lord have mercy if you just didn't have to look at them and uh, uh, but the old familiar voice you know go up he said, all those prophets with one accord, go up, go up, you're going to get the victory. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. That's what the devil's saying today. While the ship is sinking, they're saying, go up, go up. Amen. You're going to get, you're going to win the battle. But I'm telling you, we're living in the last days. And you better get prepared. You better get filled with the Holy Ghost uh, like you never have before and say, God, make me worthy in this last day. Can you imagine 400 of them? Woo, hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. Okay. But Jehoshaphat, somehow, this just didn't this just didn't please his palate. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Shut that door and keep on talking. Woo, hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. And uh, something about it. Jehoshaphat said, is this all you got? <laughs> oh. Everybody say, shut that door. Yeah. Keep on talking. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. But something about it. Listen, if you know the truth, yeah. amen, you get around the falsehood. You get around something that's not true. You're going to feel something. Yeah. Amen. You know why? Because when God gave you the Holy Ghost uh, and you got baptized in Jesus' name, yeah. Yeah. He gave you something down there. Yeah. Hey. He said, you will know. Everybody look at your neighbor and say, you'll know. They told me, you could see a hundred snakes. And they could look bad. But they said, if you ever see one rattlesnake, you will know it. so wonderful <laughs> amen <laughs> I come out of I come out of my door the other morning early and my car was parked right there on the carport and right there between the carport and right up on the edge of that walkway coming up was called up a big old snake and I Pull my trusted 38 out and I started to shoot him but I saw my car I said sure as the world I'll shoot my car you ever thought you was between a rock and a hard place Ooh, Lord I couldn't even find the rock right there amen hallelujah but uh, you'll know 
You know, Jesus put something in us. He said, you'll know the truth. <laughs> Woo! Come on, you'll know the truth. Everybody shout, you'll know the truth. You'll know the truth. And, and he spoke all the time about truth. He said, buy the truth and sell it not. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm truth. Hallelujah. Pilate said, what is truth? Jesus said, you're looking at it. He said, you'll know the truth. That's what he said. How? How? Because there's something built in here. If you want to walk in, now if you begin to walk contrary to the truth, you're liable to get suckered into anything. I remember about 50, 55 years ago, they come out with this stuff. It was everywhere. And uh, they said, uh, they began to go crazy. Oh, they said, Oil's dripping out of these preachers' hands. I looked at mine, and it was dry as a bone. I said, I know I got the Holy Ghost. I know I've been baptized in Jesus' name. And there was something about that that didn't sit well with me. And then up here in Memphis, they had, uh, they had them going crazy about, said they was putting gold fillings. The Lord was putting gold fillings in their teeth. But I said, why, our Lord is not that cheap. Ooh, what is gold? I said, if he's going to do it, he'll put it back just like it was. Woo, because Naaman, amen, that had the sores all over him, amen, that was full of leprosy, amen, when God healed him, the Bible said his skin was as a baby's skin. Amen. Ooh. Oh, I'm just about to get off of my subject. But uh, Jehoshaphat said, Is there any more? Ahab said, They got one. But I hate him. Yes, sir. That's what he said. Come on. The world's not going to. If the world loves you, that's because you are part of the world. The world won't love you. He said, the world will hate you. But he said, I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, that's why the world hates you. But said, don't worry about it. The world hated me before it hated you. Come on, amen. You're in a book, brother. What he said. And so Ahab said there's just one more, but I hate him. His name is Micaiah. And uh, Jehoshaphat I said, oh no, not so. Let's 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 wait. Let's hear him. And so he came up there and he prophesied and he said, You're not going. He said, He said, I told you. Ahab said, I told you he prophesied bad about us. And they said, but look at all these other prophets out here. They're saying good things. And you know what Micaiah said? He said, the Lord spoke to me. Woo! Hallelujah to God. Brother, when God speaks to you, you don't have to worry about nothing. You don't have to worry about the devil. You don't have to worry about circumstances, but God will bring it to pass. Yes. 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 And so Micaiah said, the Lord spoke to me and he showed me a picture in, in heaven. And he said, the Lord was sitting on the throne and he said, how? How can we get Ahab to go up? And said, uh, the Bible said, one spirit said on this manner, 
and another sit on this manner. But there was one spirit that stood before God and said, I know how to get him. That's it. Come on. And so the Lord said, well, speak on. He said, I'll go and be a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets, and that'll get him. Oh, hallelujah to God. But thank God for somebody that don't want to be popular. They just want to be used of God in this last day. Hallelujah. Thank God for truth. Thank God for truth. Thank God for truth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I think of men like Stephen. And if they have a shutdown, someone said a while ago that if they didn't get this thing, the government shutdown settled in about 10 days or something, said uh, it would, there would be no social security checks. And there's so many people in America today that can't live without those checks. They just can't live without them. They've learned to depend on them. And I'm not saying that it's, it's this time. But if that happens, millions of people are at the mercy of the government. Hallelujah to God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And, 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 and when that time comes and they say you can't buy or sell unless you take the mark of the beast. Amen. Brother, there are going to be millions and millions that are going to march up and take the mark because they've never learned to trust God. They've never learned to put their trust in Jesus Christ. They've never learned the truth. Stephen, I want you to know tonight, I hope this sobers you up. This is not a popular gospel. No. If you pray, really pray, you're not going to be popular and take a stand. Now, I don't mean like some of these folks going out there running up and down telling people they're going to hell. I'm not talking about that. But Stephen was stoned to death because he stood for the truth. John the Baptist was beheaded by Herod. James, the brother of John, was put to death with the sword. These are apostles. These are the, the great apostles of the Lord. Philip was severely flogged, imprisoned, and then crucified. Matthew was killed with an axe. James was stoned and clubbed to death. Matthias was stoned and beheaded. Peter was crucified upside down. Paul was beheaded in Rome. This does not sound like it's a popular gospel. Amen. This gospel is not popular. No, it's not right. If you'll turn with me, I know my time's getting away, but if you'll turn with me to the book of Luke, the 21st chapter, about the 25th verse, Jesus said that before, before the Son of Man returned, did I say, what did I say, Matthew? It's Luke. Luke 21 and 25. Jesus said that before 
the Son of Man return, he said they'd be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. As a matter of fact, almost throughout that whole chapter, Jesus talked about the signs that would point to his return. Therefore, he intended for us to know the signs of the time. Because he said one time, he said, you're not children of darkness. But you're children of light. He said, you know the times and the seasons. People today are prophesying that Jesus will come at certain times and they're buying food and storing it up and going off to the woods to hide. But when he comes, every eye is going to behold him. Hallelujah to God. He's coming and you'll know it. Thank God. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you're on the highway traveling, way out between cities, you rarely ever see a billboard. You just don't see many. But when you start getting closer to the city limits of that town, you begin to see billboards, signs up there. And as you get into town, if you want a motel or whatever you're looking for, the signs will be up there. And so we're living in the last days and God gave us signs. Thank God that we would know Hallelujah. We have signs in the Word of God. Turn with me to the book of James. I've got to hurry. The fifth chapter. He said, Go to now, you rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are mothy. Your gold and silver is cankered. And the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as if it was fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. But then, notice in that same chapter, the seventh verse and the eighth verse. Jesus said, listen, be patient. That's something a lot of folks don't have much of. Patience. But he said, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. People get all worked up. They go through a trial. And they throw up their hands and backslide. And they got to come back and pray back through. And, but the devil knew where you threw up your hands. And he's going to get you right back to that same spot. Amen. But when you're going through these trials, the Bible said, when you've done all that you can to stand, he said, just stand. Woo! Everybody shout, stand. Stand with your loins girt about with truth. Have it on the helmet of salvation. Yeah. Amen. The breastplate of righteousness. The sword of the spirit. And being shod with the preparation of the gospel. Come on. He said, brethren, be patient unto the coming of the Lord. And then he said something that I hadn't really noticed. In that next verse there. He said, the husbandman. Everybody say the husbandman. the husbandman. You know who that is? The Lord Jesus Christ. The husbandman hath long patience. Ooh, hallelujah. The husbandman hath, he waiteth for the precious fruits of the earth and hath long patience for He's been waiting, uh, amen, for you and I to get ready for the rapture for 2,000 years now. 
Amen. He's waited patient. He's waited long. He said, for the precious fruit of the earth. And then he said, he hath long patience for us. And if, if God hadn't have been patient and merciful to us, not one of us would be here today. But he's been merciful. The Bible said, in your patience. So next time you go to get me excited, I'm, I'm getting mad. You better get glad real quick. You better learn patience. I said you better learn some patience. Because the Bible said, in your patience. In your patience. You possess your soul. Whew. Whew. Let's lift our hands and love him. Let's lift our hands. Let's lift our hands. Let's stand tonight. I got another scripture I want to read, but let's stand. I feel the Holy Ghost is strong here. A lot of people are going through trials. They're going through tests. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. We used to sing an old song a long time ago. Wait a little longer, please, Jesus. There are so many wandering out in sin. Just a little longer, please, Jesus. Just a few more days to get our loved ones in. Here the labors are so hard, and the workers are so tired, and our weary hearts are yearning for rest. First week try, O oh Lord, please come. Come and take your children home. But then we look around us and we say, Oh, wait a little longer, please, Jesus. There are so many wandering out in sin. Oh, I'm feeling here strong tonight. I believe he's talking to our hearts tonight. I believe he's talking to hearts out on that internet tonight. Thank God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. While you're standing, I'm closing. 2 Timothy 3 said, This note also, that in the last days, there it is again. In the last days. Everybody say the last days. Perilous times shall come. That's, that means dangerous. The, the word last days is used several times in the New Testament. Here the Apostle Paul in writing to Timothy said, In the last days, dangerous times would come. Lord have mercy. Jesus said in Matthew 24, said you'll hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. But then he said, for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, there shall be famines, pestilence, and earthquakes in diverse places. He said all of these things are the beginning of sorrows. And he said, when you see all of these things begin to come to pass, he said, lift up your head for your reward.
redemption. Woo! So right now, let's give the Lord a pen and a praise. Around this altar, and let's worship him tonight for truth. 